now, as well as the immediate human cost of the Taliban takeover, there's also the long-term difficulties that will be caused by an economic freefall. Just yesterday, the IMF cut off Kabul from $500 million of funding it was set to receive. Afghanistan is also estimated to be the source of trillions of dollars of rare, rare earths, including some which may be key for the transition to green energy. There's a danger that without a solid and internationally recognized government, Afghanistan's reserves could be exploited by neighbors that want to claim them for their own. We're now joined by Hank Van Alphen, CEO of Wealth Minerals, who of course knows this issue very well. So Hank, in your research, you write that Afghanistan's vast mineral resources uh, present a lost opportunity. What exactly do you mean by that? Um, you know, uh, developing mines around the world is actually a very uh, problematic, costly and time consuming effort. And, um, you know, Afghanistan, unfortunately, they have these wonderful resources sitting there and it's not entirely likely that they will be developed, let's say, anytime soon. You know, it's obviously not a place where people will be investing money anytime soon. And so, so it's unfortunate for, for a country like Afghanistan, but it's not entirely a unique, unique situation in the world either. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm kind of curious, you know, before uh, the U.S. troops decided to withdraw, before the Taliban recently took back control, were there any efforts underway to try to tap some of these resources? There has been uh, efforts before, not, not entirely for the lithium or the rare earths, but there has been uh, uh, efforts in copper, oil, uh, iron ore, and none of them have gone anywhere. So all these uh, wonderful ideas. The Chinese have spent billions of dollars trying to put mines in production there, and none of them have ever come to fruition. So does that change now, though, with China still present in Afghanistan? Of course, they share a 47-mile border. With the U.S. gone, does China come in and fill that vacuum and actually end up being successful uh, in mining some of these rare earths? I, I, I think uh, the, I, I, I'd be very surprised. And China would be probably one of the few countries that would make an attempt maybe in the future to see. First of all, you have to see what the developments are going to be there with the Taliban in power now. So that's that's going to be some time consuming. And then and then, you know, then you'll have to see. I mean, it hasn't been entirely a wonderful experience for the Chinese so far. It, it's 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 very difficult to put mines in production in unstable environments like that. So mm. I, I'd be surprised if the, if they have a lot of uh, um, uh, um for for running into uh, Afghanistan in the near future, but there is, but there is going to be an enormous shortage of rare earths and 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 certainly lithium in the world. So there will be mm -hmm. always somebody at some point try to actually develop something there, but that's going to be very difficult. Right, because this is a very crucial thing you write in your research, Hank, about sort of the need for lithium, the growth of the EV market. If Afghanistan, at least for the near and medium term, isn't really a, a resource and can't contribute to this global need for lithium, can anything fill in the gap? Well, <clears throat> this is one of the, you know, I've been in the mining industry for a long time. It's one of the few times I think we're in an industry now that, that whereby everybody is developing automobiles, as if there is no tomorrow, and there really isn't. I don't think there's enough lithium out there, certainly in the short term, to supply all these wonderful ideas. So yes, it's there's going to be a bit of a crunch. Lithium prices have gone up quite a bit already. I mean, and they'll probably go and peak again. Uh, so you have to be try to be in more stable environments, obviously, to to find it. And there is obviously places where you can develop lithium. We. We as a company have a, we're operating out of Chile, so Chile being a very good environment to, to work out of, but it's, but it's going to be tough and, 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 and it also requires all kinds of new technologies to be used in the future in order to make this all work. Right. And, you know, of course, sort of the, the price of a lot of metals is on everyone's mind, considering we've seen a lot of commodity prices spike higher. To what degree does it just result in higher prices versus stifling innovation, new things that without that access and more resources of lithium, you no longer have? Well, I mean, I, I well, the mining industry generally is very efficient at finding things when prices go up. So mm. so it will eventually will will accommodate lithium will be found but as i said 
the key component, right, because a lot of the, the lithium comes out of lithium brines, and that today is done through an evaporation process, uh, let's say, and it's not, it's very inefficient, it's not entirely environmentally uh, friendly, so all that stuff needs to change, and that has to change fairly rapidly in order to supply, supply the, the, the market that, is, that we're going to see here. Like, lithium demand is supposed to go up 40 times, 40 times in the next 15 years. I mean, 40 times is an enormous number, no matter what you produce, yeah? Hank, before I let you go, I do have to ask one more question about Afghanistan. And, and specifically, one thing stood out to me in your research as well, that you wrote, not only is this a lost opportunity given Afghanistan's uh, large uh, uh, rare earths, rare uh, mineral uh, access, but that also presents a national security threat as well. What's the thinking there? You know, the, it's, it's, it's the resource curse that you, that you can have, let's say. So... So, you know, let's just face, uh, Afghanistan is not going to be a very uh, pleasant environment to be in. It's going to be very corrupt. So you have these vast resources sitting there. So it's, it's going to turn into a curse more than a blessing for, for countries like Afghanistan, where you have enormous amounts of corruption going to happen in the future. So this is, uh, unfortunately, this should be a blessing for a, com a country like Afghanistan, and it's probably not going to happen that way. Hank, thanks so much for joining us. I know it is late where you are, so we really appreciate you no. staying up and being on with us. That's Hank Van Alphen, CEO of Wealth Minerals. Thanks again for joining us. Now let's get over to the First Word News with Annabelle Jewelers.